Okay, so today I'm going to be doing my lesson plan on the Great Depression. Um, I have a little PowerPoint presentation here, kind of, you know, what is the Great Depression, how did it start, kind of life during, and then how the United States got out of a depression. Um, and then at the end of my lesson, I have a little, little short kahoot, just with some questions from the presentation here um, on the Great Depression. So let's get started. Uh, what is a depression? Um, th we're talking in money terms here. So we're talking an economic turn that is basically money. Money flow, money, you know, slow business cycles, uh, money exchanging hands. So basically, a depression is a long-term downturn in economic activity. It's, you know, to break that down for you, simply, is that no money is exchanging hands. It's not moving around. A business cycle is slow. A business cycle is, um, you know, let's say, for instance, how many of you in, the, in class have a, have a job after school? You know, um, okay, you work at a retail store, you know. You work somewhere that's selling clothes, right? You're a cashier. You help people find the clothes, whatever, right? So basically, a, a business cycle would be you help a customer, you know, find their clothes, whatever, check them out, make a sale. Well, that money that they used to buy those clothes is now going to be used to pay you for your salary or your employee or to pay bills for that company, right? But what those people are buying and spending their money on is used to pay you. And then what do you do with that money? You know, what, how many of you on a Friday night go out to eat or go to a movie or buy clothes or, you know, spend money on something? Well, you're taking that money that you used to buy your own, you know, enjoyment, entertainment. And that's a cycle. Somebody is coming into your place of work they're buying something a service a product from you and your company and then you're taking your salary that you earn and you're going to spend it somewhere else and that's a business cycle you know it's going through you're earning the money you're spending the money someone else is earning that money and, it, and it's this continuous continuous path of spending and earning and that's a business cycle and so when we have a depression that is slowed there is no exchange of money. It's not going from person to person, business to business. Because people aren't spending it. And what happens when that happens? People become unemployed because businesses fail. No one is spending money. Well, now we can't afford to pay you, so we're going to have to fire you. We're late. Let you go. And then this leads to bankruptcies because if people don't have jobs, they're not making money. They can't spend money. They, you know... You go bankrupt, just like a business would. Why do we call it the Great Depression? You know what was so great about this? It was the worst economic disaster in history. It was the biggest one, the worst one. And just the effects of it hurt so many people in so many ways. It was great. The stock market crash itself wiped out millions of investors so this was kind of the first phase or part i guess you could say of the De great depression was the stock market crashing and at this time people had put so much money and so much faith into the stock market that when it crashed so many people lost everything they lost every dollar they had made in the stock market and they went bankrupt businesses went bankrupt people went bankrupt so they lost millions and millions and millions of dollars in this. like we said before consumer spending dec decreased so people weren't spending money on things other than bare necessities you know food that was what people were buying you know and when i mean bare necessity i mean you know bread milk meat stuff like that that is bare necessity. they're not spending on um, you know fancy types of food they're not going out of their way to get you know this and that they're getting the bare necessities to feed their family so when you're not spending money people aren't making money like i said in that slide before the business cycle and that is a major effect 
and a reason why the stock market or why the Great Depression was so deadly is people lost so much money in the stock market. They stopped spending money. They were afraid to put their money somewhere because they, they had no faith that it wouldn't be lost. And then you can see right there with this happening, half of the banks failed. Half of the banks in the U.S. failed. Now, you can think of how many banks there are on your way to school or how many, you know, are around where your house lives and where you go on a Friday night. How many banks do you pass? Now, imagine half of those go out of business and they're gone. That's what it was like during the Great Depression. All those banks had failed because of it. So some of the causes. These, there's, there's more than one cause here to the Great Depression, and, and we're kind of going to briefly touch on these here. Um, so this happened in the 1920s, you know, the late 20s and into the 30s here. And part of the reason this happened was because of the Roaring Twenties. I'm sure you all have heard of it. But basically what happened in the 20s was the lifestyle for many people had increased. It had changed into much, much better ways of living. You know, there was a lot more partying and a lot more expensive cars and dresses and wealth spread throughout in the 20s just because people had made a lot of money in the stock market. They had made money working their you know businesses had taken off they had roared you know soared up so high that millions and millions of dollars were flowing around for all these people and that was kind of you know a big change in what they were used to and so people were all really you know high on this kind of life and they're going to kind of see that they were spending money and putting their money in places that weren't really safe and secure like the stock market. Well, when the stock market crashed, people lost all of their money because people had put every single dollar they had made into it because they were making a lot of money. So it was a safe thing to them, but it wasn't. As many of you know, the stock market is not a very safe way. It's risky. You can make a lot of money, but you can also lose a lot of money, and that's what happened during the, the Great Depression. Millions of investors were were lost they lost every single dollar they made they couldn't they couldn't afford to buy bread anymore and this was a you know major turn after they had you know had the fancy cars and big houses and this really you know crazy lifestyle that was just perfect um consumer debt people had bought more than they could pay for you know with credit you know how many of you have a credit card out there in class you know hopefully maybe one or two of you do but hopefully you understand that a credit card isn't you know you have to pay that money off at the end of the month and when you can't afford it you're going to be in debt and that debt for these people was huge they were putting money they were putting so much on credit that they couldn't afford you know parts of it so this debt they now have to carry around and still pay off, but they're not making any money and they're not working and they can't afford now to buy food to put on the table, but they still have to pay this debt off. And what happens when you don't pay a debt? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually you have to pay it off where they take something away from you, right? Um, the bank rush, this was part of the reason the banks failed was because everyone started running to banks I want to, and they wanted to take out every single dollar they had. So, you know, people had all this money in their bank accounts and their savings accounts and and whatnot. And they were going to bank. I want it all in cash right now and taking it out. And, and banks couldn't do that. They couldn't, you know, they don't keep every single dollar on hand. So when, you know, one customer wants it, they might be able to, but when everybody's doing it they're not they're not going to have enough cash on hand to be able to make that and so banks were failing and people were losing their money and there was no secure way in banks that kept your money safe that insured you for up to a certain percent and then a drought occurred so farmers couldn't produce you know their food they couldn't make you know food for the 
for themselves or for the country, their animals starved, and just a huge loss in that industry was part of it, and that kind of caused, you know, economic struggles for farmers in that industry, but also then the country, because now we don't have food, we don't have those resources that were homegrown, and then again with the, with the consumer debt was loans couldn't be paid, so all these people that had given out loans weren't going to be paid back, and they had lost money now. So it just kind of, you know, layered. It just keeps piling and piling and piling on. Everything kind of goes hand in hand here. So some of the reactions to try to get the U.S. out of this terrible time. And this lasted for several years. This lasted to the mid, you know, kind of the late 30s. So about 10 years or so. Um, we first saw President Hoover try to get the U.S. out of it. And he kind of struggled um, and the, you know, the, the people were not very happy with what he was doing. So when the elections came around, they elected, you know, President Roosevelt. And he came up with this idea of the New Deal programs was what it was called right up here. The New Deal. And basically what his were, were different steps, programs that were going to help the U.S. get out of this terrible time basically um what he started were these work programs right down here the wpa the works progress administration and basically this was an organization that was set up to create jobs for as many people as possible and as you can see right here it employed 8.5 million people roughly right so that program itself was putting that those people to work in various jobs whether it was you know building railroads or you know building and preserving national parks any job you could think of if you were an artist they were trying to find different projects for artists or carpenters um different painters um you know if you worked with different materials or if you could do this if you could make shoes if you could make dresses or you build houses they were finding industries and jobs for all of these people to put them back to work to earn them a paycheck and with that we see different you know jobs created in different places you know he established national parks and people to preserve those you know we see many things being built and being rebuilt to be better than they were before so people could work people were now in work and this is where we start to see people earning money now they can spend money now someone else is making money now they're spending the money and, it, and that business cycle is trying to starting to pick up with this and basically um a big part of his program that restored a lot of faith in these people were his fireside chats so basically every night you know after dinner everyone in the u.s would that had radios because there weren't tvs he would get over and broadcast to every citizen and he would basically just talk to them just like we're talking now in a nice you know soothing tone and, and it was simple and he basically was just there to restore their confidence and their faith in him, the country, and one another. And that was that was huge because people started really to buy into his programs then because of this. They, you know, they could, it was more personal. He was in their home. He was speaking to them. And this, you know, was, was a good sign for them to to believe in him and really put a lot of faith into what he was putting out. And it, and it and it worked um we also saw um agencies like the fdic and the sec you know start up and those are still seen today you know these next couple points here these three the fdic the sec and the social security act those were started during this time and we still see those today those are still a major part of of our time now does anyone know what the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, is? Anyone in class? You know, hopefully someone can tell me that 
it's you know for banks and it insures your money and and that's it correct it is it's it's an insurance that when you put your money in a bank you if something happens like this it's not all going to be lost so you can have faith that you know and trust that bank and you're not going to lose your money that's what was created then it was insured this was something that wasn't before so when the banks crashed people lost everything so this started to restore their faith in banks um next point the sec the securities and exchange commission does anybody know what that does and what they do and hopefully someone can say oh you know maybe they regulate businesses well they do they are there to ensure that businesses that are publicly traded don't break rules aren't lying about you know what they're putting out there their money so when when a company's publicly traded you know on the stock market that everything they do is open to the public to see you know every financial statement everything that has to do with money everything that happens to that company broken down literally by quarter every single year going back for as long as they've been traded even before you have to be able to see and they have to put out to you so the sec basically regulates and makes sure every company follows the same rules and does the same thing so when you're investing your money in a stock market you can be sure that they're not lying that what they put out there is true so they're not forging numbers or making sure that whatever number is put out there is the truth and it helps investors feel more safe about what they're putting their money into social security act down here that we see kind of has um, these couple parts to it covers unemployment so kind of right i mean i don't know if you guys know right now but with the coronavirus going on millions and millions of people are filing for unemployment to you know try to get money for not working because you're not working you can't make a paycheck right you can't pay your bills you can't feed your family so people are filing for unemployment to try to earn some of that money that they would have had when they were working another part of this is disabilities so if you have a disability and you aren't able to work you can file for it and you can earn money um pensions so it's a retirement plan for you know certain industries like teachers um, government officials get these so when you work you know money is put into your pension plan and when you've worked a certain amount of years you're eligible to retire with this you know savings account basically for you that's been been there since you started working and it's kind of a nice um a nice deal to when you work those jobs that you get this plan to retire with and that's part of that program and one of the big things that the the wpa the work progress administration did to create jobs was when world war ii was starting they turned a lot of their jobs into manufacturing jobs for the war and this created so many jobs that this is really when we start to see the u.s get out of um the great depression uh, i got this little video here hopefully we can heart rates 120 bp's 140 over 90 obviously hectic first day but earning my nursing degree all right it's just a little four minute when video Franklin here roosevelt became president he offered a new deal for the american people what was the new deal how was it put in place all right so what basically this video here is just to describe the New Deal and the programs and how they worked. So just a little short four minute clip here on um, his programs and a little bit more in depth kind of where they talk about the alphabet soup programs and the different names. Because a lot of them obviously have different, you know, different letters here, here, and there like that. So a little video there. Um, and then what do we still see today? You know, what what is still seen from the Great Depression? And this is where I would ask the class, you know, hopefully they're paying attention in the last couple of slides. What do we still see in our society? You know, hopefully they can say, oh, well, the FDIC and the SEC and 
and unemployment and social security and you pay into that and, and hopefully that we can have that going back and forth and kind of ask the questions about it but there are other parts that came out of this too and, and that video does a, a, a pretty good job of explaining some of that and paying attention during that but you know national parks were started to be created here um obviously stock market has a major turn in this with you know there is a stoppage point so if it's traded too much and people start selling and selling and selling and no one's buying and it gets to a certain point it shuts off done no more trading for the day you're not allowed to do anything else it's closed this limits you know it's kind of like a stop order it limits the stock market from being sold you know everything is selling 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 and no one buying that's gonna limit you know and try to prevent a crash like there was before and hopefully you know talking and asking questions to the class they're able to tell me these answers and go back and forth with them um and then here's basically just some uh, pictures so black tuesday here is what the day the stock market crashed they called that black tuesday um right here you can see the stock market crashed in 1929 so this was kind of like the first big piece right here was black tuesday um here's a mother with her children this is kind of one of the more famous pictures from this time just kind of just the the disaster that they're going through and you can see just kind of the pain and the, the suffering going on with the mom there and the kids are kind of hiding with her and they just kind of look dirty and you know kind of worn out clothes and that was just kind of what the time was but that's a pretty famous picture that kind of just shows the the family side of it and you see this next picture here this woman she's hiding her face as they're taking a picture but this was a reality back then where parents were selling kids you know if you had four kids and you could only feed you know afford to afford to feed two of them well what are you going to do with the other two you you can't you can't just starve your kids so a lot of people turn to selling their children for money because they ha they had to you know i mean you can see the lady is ashamed here but you know it, it, if she doesn't they'll all probably die they can't afford to all eat i don't know if you can see this picture very well but up in the top corner here um these guys walking around with these posters around themselves you know wanting a job to be able to feed their family and it's basically just listing out their you know qualifications they want a decent job um decent man it lists their age their families and say oh you know i fought in the war um i have training in this you know i went to college the one guy says he's a family man he's got children so a lot of men went out you know with these posters on just trying to get jobs trying to you know basically offer you know when you go for a job now you have a resume that kind of lists everything this is kind of what they were doing here is they put it on a sign or walking around saying here here's my qualifications this is who i am hire me same thing down here um big sign you know anybody was willing to take anything you know they wanted something that would pay them they would take just about any job you know if you worked you know if you worked in a bank and you were you know a, a nice suit and tie every day to work they would have taken you know build something i'll be a garbage man i'll do this just something to make money so my family can eat and right here is another article from um brooklyn just the wall street and panic as it crashes um just a headline i mean it was massive the the stock market crash it was huge and this was kind of like i said the beginning of it so they made this known in every paper and this is another just another article about it um down here are little kids holding a sign saying why can't you give my dad a job and you know these these men and women were using their children as you know holding up signs saying hey you know you gotta help me so i can feed my kid people were doing anything they needed the money they needed a job so just about anything was was acceptable then and then this last picture here you see all these men in a line um daily they would line up you know in hopes to to get a job you know they wait here and hopefully someone's gonna come by and you know say you know hey you go here today you do this and make some money 
Um, and that's what they did. There was nothing else to do, so they went to these lines, and this is, you know, I don't know if you can really tell, but it's kind of four or five people across and, and deep, and this would probably go for at least several blocks because that's how many people were unemployed. All right, so that's the end of the slideshow. Let's see if we can get over to the Kahoot. Kind of run through that real quick. All right, Kahoot. So basically just little eight questions here, nothing too fancy. Um, you know, some pictures over here, kind of the first question, but we'll go through and explain my thinking with the Kahoot and what was the plan for the students. Basically, you know, first question, what was Black Thursday? And right here, here's our questions. You know, obviously, the stock market crashed. You know, hopefully that one's not too tricky. But it's kind of the, the day that the, the Great Depression started. And this is where things started to take a turn. And so my thought was through the Kahoot here would be to, to go over the question, obviously, see the answers, make sure everyone gets it right. And, and if there are any questions about it, to really go over you know it's short enough that in between each question i can say hey this is this and you know why'd you get it wrong and explain it and so making sure everybody's on the same page and understanding the question um what is a depression right here just economic downturn kind of you know the the dictionary definition of it you know make sure we understand what what we're talking about an economic struggle is not as big as an economic downturn this is something that really is going to take the country and the society and, and really hurt them for a long time this you know they're struggling but they're still going to get by what year did the great depression start you know little piece hopefully they're listening and making sure 1929 right there which president was credited with helping america recover here he is in the corner over here but that would be franklin d roosevelt not Abraham Lincoln, not Eisenhower, and Hoover obviously was at the beginning of it, but he was not credited with helping America. How many people were unemployed? Into the millions here, we have 15. 15 million people were unemployed. This could get tricky. This 8.5 here was mentioned later in the presentation about how many people were employed by the, the, the WPA. And so not looking to trip them up, but making sure they're listening there. Um, what was the solution created by Roosevelt? Uh, and that would be the New Deal programs. We see that right here. Work program, WPA, right there. So those, these were these, you know, advertisements for the, his programs. What was a New Deal program based off this? These are all correct. In the video, it talks about the FHA, Federal Housing Administration. Still see that today. Social Security, Securities Exchange, and then federal deposit insurance so these are all talked about in that video you know if you're paying attention they go in depth a little bit on all these and then what was the purpose of our fireside chats just to restore confidence it wasn't anything other than just to to get his message out more personally to the citizens so this was my presentation um and my lesson plan i hope that you all enjoy it and if there's any questions i can take them now and I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.